fit, formidable, and fantastic. Hey everyone, this is Corey McCarthy and welcome to a new episode. Recently I was tagged on Facebook in the comments below an article published by the Chicago Tribune on October 12th. An article titled, Meat Lovers Rejoice, You're Winning the War, by S.E. Cup. The ultimate point of this article is to demonstrate how there are more than a few reasons why Americans will not and should not stop eating meat, end quote. And as you can imagine, I was requested to eviscerate this piece of shit in the comment where I was tagged. And who am I to let a viewer down? The soiled toilet paper masquerading as an article leads in with four paragraphs describing the Obama administration's urge for Americans to consume less meat and the ecological reasons behind the administration's statement, which, as you can also see here, the author agrees with. Of course, I wholeheartedly agree with this too, though I advocate halting meat, dairy, and egg consumption altogether, obviously. But baby steps are better than standing still, I suppose. And uh, big change on a large scale rarely, if ever, happens overnight, so I will take a nibble if I can't have a full bite. It's better than nothing. And I've previously elaborated on the UN's earlier statement about eliminating animal agriculture for the sake of our planet. So this is nothing new to me or even to most vegans. However, the article takes a headlong dive straight into a steaming shit pile from there, as you'd expect given the smug title. So I will do as I usually do in my article responses and pick this dreadful turd apart chunk by chunk. The first argument could actually be broken into three parts, the umbrella argument plus two supportive points, and I will beat down each with equal measure. The umbrella argument is that it will most certainly not save the planet. To have any meaningful impact on the global climate, a meat abstinence campaign would require worldwide cooperation and compliance. I agree with this to a degree. Vegans aim for a growing compliance to a meat-free, dairy-free, and egg-free diet. The more who comply, the merrier for the movement, and the more impactful the results will inevitably be. This is a no-brainer. Especially when you consider that on an individual level, the average vegetarian saves 404 lives per year. A vegan would inevitably save more. So do the math, but at the same time, one person can still make a difference, Miss Cup. A small difference is better than cowardly resignation, unless, of course, cowardly resignation is your modus operandi. You tell me. Are you a winner, or are you a quitter? Anyhow, she continues by arguing that a struggling economy like Brazil's, who she claims is the world's largest exporter of beef and second largest beef producer, would be damaged by limiting meat consumption. What she fails to realize is... Apparently, agriculture only makes up 5.5% of Brazil's gross domestic profits. The service sector makes up the lion's share at 67%, followed closely by the industrial sector at 25.7%. Hell, 36 of the Forbes 2000 list are Brazilian companies, none of which are agriculturally related. In fact, they mostly appear to be industrial sector. So, Miss Cup, it would logically follow that Brazil's economy wouldn't be as hurt as you've exaggerated simply by lessening or a halted export of their meat. And if their economy is in any kind of turmoil, they might want to refine their most statistically profitable sectors like the service and industrial. Moving forward, she then argues that cows have value beyond meat, uh, such as for their milk, and that because of this value, we assure their long-time survival. Perhaps it will, it will surprise you to know, Miss Cup, but the bovine species had existed before we began farming them. We didn't invent them. We do, however, perpetually breed very many animals into captivity as commodities, uh, into lives of servitude, forced impregnation, slaughter, all for our convenience and pleasure, and all the while for someone else's bottom line. If we just let them the fuck alone and stop breeding them into these captivity situations, they could exist as they had without human intervention at their own natural pace. Perhaps you also don't know. But humans have been responsible for 322 animal extinctions in just the last 500 fucking years, two-thirds of which have occurred in the last two centuries, according to a paper published in the journal Science. 
So we should just leave other species the fuck alone. We seem to be a problem, or rather, our selfish actions are. And the aforementioned atro atrocious conditions of the meat and dairy industry are not a pleasurable way of life to be mass-bred into. Do you believe that they are? Could you be that deluded? I mean, would you enjoy being forcefully inseminated on the daily while being kept confined and when you finally gave birth to have your child ripped away from you so it can serve a profitable purpose of its own while you will be milked for your dairy for a profit? All because some other species has a large-scale hankering for your pus-ridden tit juice. There, have a dose of perspective. They don't need us to perpetuate their species, just as we don't need another species to perpetuate our own. So please don't fool or flatter yourself regarding our importance in the scheme of this planet. Moving along. You continue by arguing that humans prefer to eat meat, that it is within our biology and evolution to do so. Aww, oh, so we should do it because we like it? Exit logic, enter selfishness. Now, you really just look like a fool. No, we are not biologically obligate carnivores. Do you even science, Miss Cup? In fact, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, one of the oldest and leading medical nutrition organizations in the world, has released an official statement that we not only can survive as vegans, but even thrive. So, your supportive statement that ex-vegan Lair Keith has written in The Vegetarian Myth that A vegetarian diet, and especially a vegan diet, does not provide for the long-term maintenance and repair of the human body. So vegetarians are on a drawdown of their biological reserves. Is ultimately flawed from the standpoint of actual biology. And really? It cannot provide for the long-term maintenance and repair of the human body? I guess I must be a fucking unicorn or these muscles are holograms. Check out the link in the description below to the Malnourished Vegans Golden Album and have a nice look at other vegans with holographic muscles like my own. Or perhaps they're also unicorns. If not holograms or unicorns, then Lear Keith is just glaringly wrong. I'd say it's more likely that Lear Keith is wrong. Just saying. But hey, fantasy can be fun. I like Lord of the Rings. Anyhow. You also argue that meat has played a role in human development on our intelligence and social development and that discontinuing consuming meat would have disastrous consequences. Once again, you and Logic don't appear to get along or something. I mean, I never see you two in the same room, you know? You've dropped the logical fallacy here with an appeal to tradition. Just because we engaged previously in an activity and perhaps someone or some ones even benefited from it on some level at one time, doesn't imply it needs to always be that way. To assume otherwise is fallacious and backwards and promotes stagnancy. And mankind has engaged in a lot of unfortunate activities throughout our history, like attempted genocides, slavery, rape, gender and race-based inequality, Etc. So why are you cherry-picking one fucking action from our entire history that has marked the path to where we are today? Learning to harness fire and cook our foods also played a role in our development, lest you forget. Furthermore, let's not forget the previous statement I shared from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, I just keep repeating this, that we do not need meat, dairy, or eggs to survive or thrive. That's biology, so please stop appealing to the past or tradition. That's two strikes against you now, at least for illogical debate tactics. And just as I accused you of only two, you drop this fecal-tastic bomb that hunting for food is in turn keeping animal populations in check, which in turn is keeping our crops from being consumed by wild animals, like deer. Now this could be viewed as a logical fallacy known as diminished responsibility. In this case, that it's cool to kill for our food because we're keeping certain animal populations down at the same time from harming our crop production, and thus we shouldn't feel guilty for our actions, right? Even though, and as I've demonstrated, that we don't need meat for survival or to thrive. You are also creating a false dilemma here, another fallacy, where you seem to only be considering or portraying, rather, limited alternatives to the problem that you are presenting, when in fact, 
alternatives are not as limited as you would have your readers believe. Part of coexisting in the world, as we are with the other life on this planet, is accepting a degree of consequence from said existence. We can't expect to have it all, like selfish children. This planet is not completely ours. If we want to keep um, animals off our farmland more effectively, property being a construct of human society, we need to use better measures to confine said farmland. Bigger, more complex fencing is one idea, and a nonviolent one at that. Brainstorm a little. We could apply your logic to human beings as well, just for a dose of perspective. A quick look at the news on any given day will demonstrate a constant occurrence of human trespass and violence toward other humans or their properties. I wonder how many breaking and entering and home invasion cases, for instance, I would find imposed on humans by other animals. I honestly can't recall the last time I read or overheard a headline like, Wild Ox Breaks Into Area Family's Home, Rapes Wife, Kills Husband, or something of that ilk. We arguably do, do more harm on a daily basis to ourselves and our ways of life than any other animal inflicts upon us and on this planet. And we don't limit that behavior to just ourselves. And yet, who's keeping our burgeoning population in check? Who's hunting us to, in turn, alleviate the constant threats that we inflict upon each other, other species, and the planet? In fact, on one hand, going vegan en masse can directly combat world hunger within our exploding population, because we won't be feeding mass-bred commercial livestock the food that could feed entire populations of starving people in impoverished areas. Vegans aren't the bad guys, and your cognitive dissonance is so vividly displayed when you outright attack our tenets. You are so clearly deluded as your arguments are so clearly clutching at straws, severely void of logic, as I've demonstrated. I cannot believe the Chicago Tribune would publish this shit. But apparently you're cool with living in delusion, and even ended your article claiming that you still think you're winning. There are none so blind as those who will not see. It's very sad. Anyhow, that's a wrap, as the article ends there. Do feel free to drop comments below for further discussion on this topic, and please like this video and share it. Get the response out there, and if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Otherwise, I will see you all around next time, my friends.